ahead and get started. Not in the name of the Lord. It's God. With your heads bowed and, and then your hearts lifted to the Lord. Father, we thank you today God, for allowing us this privilege, this opportunity to come together once again on this platform. Pray, oh God, that you would bless and that you would strengthen each household, Lord God, each family, Lord. Lord God, I pray, oh God, that you would meet every need, oh God, in the precious name, in your precious name. We thank you and we praise you today, Lord God. I ask, oh God, that you would even bless us. As we go through your word, I pray, oh God, that you would give us understanding and direction, Lord God, that can only come from you and through you, Lord God. I even pray, oh God, that you would bless, that you would fill with your spirit. And if there are any that are sick among us, oh Lord God, I pray, oh God, that you would touch, that you would heal, and that you would deliver as only you can. In Jesus, your precious name, we pray. Let us all say amen. 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 Can we give the Lord a hand today. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, saints. Amen. We thank God. Amen. For again, just the Lord and you know, being able to you know, to give him some thanks to some gratitude and to let him know, amen, praise God, that we appreciate uh, everything that he is doing for us, amen, in Jesus' name. Uh, today, uh, we're going to uh, begin Colossians chapter three. We thank God, amen, for you, amen, that are with us. And I pray that you've had the opportunity to read through the scripture, through the text, amen, and I, I, I would hope by now, because of the length of time we've been in this 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 book or this letter or epistle, that you've had uh, multiple opportunities to to read it and to read it again and to read it again yeah. and to read it again. Praise God! And yeah. uh, I think a lot of times that's it helps. Amen. Praise God for us to amen just to amen to. Uh, just go over uh, the subject matter or the text right. continually. And I believe, amen, it, even through that, uh, uh, you'll get more, you'll gather more insights. You'll see things you didn't see the first time or the second time or even the 10th time. Yeah. Praise God. So we thank God for that. Amen in Jesus' name. And again, we uh, thank the Lord, amen, for Elder Glisby taking the class on Tuesday. Amen. Praise God. And I appreciate that. And again, we thank God for uh, all that the Lord is doing. Amen. In Jesus name. So with that said, uh, Colossians chapter three. Um, I'm just going to read the first, the, the first four verses. And it says, if ye then be risen with Christ, Seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Amen. Uh, in our text, this, this section, this verses one through four, um, marks a transition in the epistle from really uh, from a theological statement or a doctrinal statement to a practical to practical principles. And, and so it, 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 it sort of climaxes or concludes, amen, praise God, with this summary of uh, practical teachings to follow, okay? And we'll get into that as we get further into this third chapter. So in Colossians 1, 15 to 23, uh, as in, well, rather as in Colossians 1 through 15 through 23, we see, uh, we see in Colossians 2, 8 through 3 through 4, a close linking 
of doctrines of the oneness, the, at the atonement and holiness, uh, the truth of, 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 of the one God is fully revealed where in Jesus Christ is the basis for the atonement and therefore our salvation. So the atonement in turn, that which makes us right with God is the basis for the Christian life of holiness. So our salvation does not make holiness irrelevant. Rather, it makes true holiness inward and outward, both possible and necessary. It makes true holiness, both inward and outward, praise God, possible and truly necessary. So just as in Colossians 2, uh, verses 20 through 23, which we have just come through, explains the practical implications of our death with Christ. So now in Colossians 3, 1 through 4, explains the practical implications of our resurrection with him. Amen. And when I read this and it says, okay, if then we be risen uh, with Christ. And I, I made a note here uh, on yesterday and, and essentially, this is what we do after being filled with the Holy Ghost. Praise God. You want to know what to do after the Lord fills you with the gift of the Holy Ghost? This is what you did. Praise God. If ye then be risen, resurrected, amen, with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. This verse one here assumes, again, that we have been raised together uh, with Amen. Jesus Christ, as stated in Colossians 2 and 12. <laughs> Amen. And it, 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 it literally, amen, praise God, uh, you know, speaks to the fact that we were co-raised with him. All right, so his resurrection has given us what? New life, praise God. Amen. Colossians 2 and 20, uh, as the same as in Colossians 2 and 20, where it states, amen, it says here, wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, are ye subject to ordinances? And that same, word, if, that, that same, Amen. Pray it, it 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 speaks. Amen. Praise God. Uh, that and uh, it, you know it, it, you can take the if and you can replace it. Amen. Praise God. It, it essentially means since. Amen. So since we have been risen with Christ, you know, past tense. Praise God. We're there. Uh, so it 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 it, it really then draws the practical conclusion, amen, about the resurrection of Christ. You know, we, we should seek those things, amen, since we, amen, have achieved that, since we have been risen with him, these are the things, amen, praise God, that we ought to do. These are the practical things, amen, that we ought to do to, to we should seek the things above or, or heavenly things. So in other words, we should seek righteousness, and holiness, praise God. God's redemptive work in Christ and our personal identification with that work by the new birth provide the incentive, amen, praise God, and the power, amen, praise the Lord, for holiness or for us to live, amen, that holy life. So throughout scripture, amen, it talks about, amen, here that those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. And I, I want to spend a little time here again. I think we talked about this a little earlier, amen, in um, uh, our study of Colossians. Throughout scripture, the right hand of God is, it's a figurative expression that denotes God's strength, his preeminence, and glory. Okay. It denotes God's strength, preeminence, and glory. Exodus chapter 15, verse 6 
says, thy right hand, O Lord, is become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, hath dashed in pieces the enemy. Psalm 44 and 3. For they got not the land in possession by their own sword, neither did their own arm save them, but thy right hand and thine arm and the light of thy countenance, because thou hast hadest a favor unto them. Psalms 98 and 1. O sing unto the Lord a new song. For he hath done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm hath gotten him the victory. Praise God. And so this phrase or expression applied to Christ, amen, praise God, signifies that what Christ possesses all the power, the authority, the preeminence and glory of God. Matthew chapter 26, verses 64 and 65, Jesus saith unto him, thou hast said, nevertheless, I say unto you, hereafter shall you see the son of man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest rent his clothes saying, he hath spoken blasphemy. What further need have we of witnesses? Behold, now ye have heard his blasphemy. Acts chapter 2, verse, uh, beginning at verse 34. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand until I make thy foes thy footstool. So, so this, the visible Christ, amen, is invested with all, again, the fullness of the invisible spirit, praise God. Again, as we read in Colossians 2 and 9, for in him dwelleth, that is in Christ, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, praise God. So the right hand position also denotes, amen, praise God, Christ's mediatorial role, amen, praise God, with us. Uh, Romans 3 and 4, amen, speaks to the fact that who is, who he, who he is, he that condemneth, it is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. And this is what we mean by, amen, praise God, he has this mediatorial Medi that role of a mediator, amen, praise us, praise the Lord as well, amen. And so Romans, again, 834, Hebrews chapter 8, verse 1 says, and now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, praise God. And that high priest was the one that would go Amen, praise the Lord, amen, and particularly on the Day of Atonement, amen, interceding, amen, for the sins of the people, amen, praise God. And so, amen, that role he also performs, amen, for us, praise God, as well. So his one supreme sacrifice provides intercession for our sins and free access to the throne of God. Again, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 12, but this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. First John 2, and those first two verses, one and two, my little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he is the perpetuation of our sins, not for ours only, but also the sins of the whole world, praise God, amen. So he is that mediator, praise God, for us as well. Again, as was said, amen, everything that we need can be found where? 
<laughs> in, in Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus. Praise God. Why would we seek another? Praise God. Amen. And so, so in this same sense here, amen, uh, the, this letter, this epistle speaks figuratively, to, figuratively of Christ as being on the right hand of God rather than on the throne as in revelation. In his humanity, he is still what? Our mediator. And not, un and not until after the resurrection and judgment will this role cease. Speaking of our resurrection, speaking of the, the last judgment, praise God, afterwards, we, we what? We will, will not need a mediator, amen? Because we will be what? Amen, just like him, praise God, amen. All right, and so when we look at it, and this is where you get sometimes where some people will say, well, that Christ sitting at the right hand of God is proof of two distinct divine persons with two physical bodies. All right. And so when you look at this, you know, this view is, you know, in, in to God implies that Christ is not the true God. And we know that what he is the true God. So God is indivisibly one. Praise God. You can't divide him. Amen. Praise God. He is the only God. De Deuteronomy chapter six, verse four. Hear, O Israel, the Lord, our God is one Lord, praise God. And Christ is God, St. John chapter 20 and verse 8. And Thomas answered and said unto him, speaking unto Jesus, my Lord and my God. All right. And so God is an invisible spirit. You see this in St. John chapter 1, verse 18. No man have seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him, praise God. It is in the person of Jesus Christ who expounds or explains to us who God really is. And as we mentioned before, amen, praise God, only God can explain, can declare who God is. Verse 24, uh, chapter 4, St. John chapter 4, verse 24, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit, and in truth, praise God. So God has an invisible spirit and therefore he does not have a physical body outside of who? Jesus Christ, amen. We found early in the text, amen, praise God, uh, in this letter that Paul defines him or describes him as being what? The image of God, praise God. Not, amen, praise God, a likeness, but, it, but the image. Praise God. Man was made in his likeness, but Jesus Christ is the what? Image of God. Praise Lord. Amen. So when we continue again, amen, down this path, amen, there is only one divine throne in heaven. Praise God. And Jesus Christ is the one on the throne. Amen. Revelations chapter 1, verse 7 and 8 says, Behold, he cometh with the clouds, and every eye shall see him. And they shall also which and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him, even so. Amen. Verse eight, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come. Look at what it says, the Almighty, praise God. Revelations chapter, same chapter, verse 11, saying, I am the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest write in a books, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea, that 17th verse, and 18th verse, and when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. 
and have the keys of hell, that is the grave and of death. That fourth chapter of the book of Revelations, verse two, and immediately I was in the spirit and behold, a throne was set in heaven and one sat on the throne. Verse eight, and the four beasts had each of them six wings about him and they were full of eyes within and they rest not day and night saying, holy, holy, holy Lord God almighty. There's that pray, that, that title again, almighty, which was and is and is to come. Praise God. Revelation 7 and 17, for the lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Finally, 22 and three and four, and there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the lamb shall be in it, singular, but the throne of God and of the lamb shall be in it and his servants shall serve him and they shall see his face and his name shall be in their foreheads, praise God. We remember when Stephen saw a vision, a man of heaven, he did not see or call upon two divine beings, praise God. He saw and he called upon one that was Jesus Christ, praise God. Yet he did not see Jesus merely as he had appeared on earth, but he saw him invested in all the glory of God and the position and, and excuse me, in a position of preeminence, praise God. All right, the Bible records that he saw the glory of the, the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and sat and, and they, and, and that he said, I see he the heavens open and the son of man standing on the right hand of God. Acts chapter seven, amen, in verses 55 and 56. Now let me read that again. But he being full of the Holy Ghost looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, behold, I see the heavens open and the son of man standing on the right hand of God. And they stoned Stephen calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Praise God. He called upon God saying, he called upon God saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. My Lord. Hallelujah. Thank God for knowing his name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The verse means, getting back to our text, amen, praise God. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, amen. Reach out for the highest gifts, amen. Someone writes, amen, praise God, of heaven, where your master reigns in power. Someone else said the right hand of God is a place of holiness or intercession, of intercession and of power. Hence, to seek those things which are above is to aim at emulating the characteristics of the Christ of glory. We sing a song, oh, how I want to be like him. Praise God. Hallelujah. We ought to, we, what do we do then? We strive, amen, to be like him. Praise God. So in summary, since we have been resurrected with Christ, we should seek those things associated with his glorious reign and emulate his holy, amen, praise God, characteristics. Amen. Praise God. He goes on and, and he, he, he says, praise the Lord, amen, after, amen, if ye then be risen and with Christ and, and he, 
tells us, amen, praise God, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Then he said, set your affection on things above, not on things, amen, of the earth. Set your affections, amen, praise God, on things above and not on things of the earth. Verse two sort of underscores the message, if you will, of verse one, telling us to mind the things above, not the things on the earth, praise God. That word affection there literally means, or that phrase, set your affection, literally means to exercise the mind, praise God. Amen. To, 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 amen. That is to entertain or have sentiment or an opinion towards something, praise God. Amen. And so in this case, in this context here, amen, praise God, he is telling us, amen, to mind the things above, not the things on the earth, praise God, but to, amen, set our minds on the things above. Not only should we seek heavenly things, praise God, but we should think heavenly thoughts. Praise God. Let me say that one more time. Not only should we seek those things which are above, seek heavenly things, but we ought to, amen, praise God, think, amen, praise God, heavenly thoughts, praise God. Um, it's amazing these songs that, that you hear Amen. Growing up and you pay so little attention to sometimes how they now come back to you. Amen. Praise God. With, you know, so much more weight. And that weight to me, amen, speaks to, amen, the reality of what it, amen, of what they're saying. You know, that's that, you know, that that song of praise, Lord, keep my mind stayed on thee you hear some of the testimonies saying, I thank God, amen, for having my mind stayed upon, all day long, had my mind stayed upon the, I used to, you know, as a child, you think about those, how in the world can you keep your mind on somebody all day long, praise God, uh, you know, I'm thinking, they, they got to be kidding, they, they, they can't do that, praise God, but you know what, I found out for myself, how many have found that out? That you can keep your mind. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Amen. Stay Amen. on Amen. Jesus. Amen. All day long. Praise God. Amen. I if, if you haven't experienced it yet, you ought to try it. <laughs> praise Amen. God. It is possible. Amen. Amen. You can do this. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> There's Amen. something about, you know, there are times when you think about it, and you know, a lot of times, you know. Uh, there are things that happen perhaps at the at the beginning of our day that can just simply, amen, just take away that mind that I just want to, amen, you know, keep my mind on him. You know, something can happen. Somebody can say something. You can be driving down the road and somebody jumps in front of you or what have you, and it just totally takes your mind away from that, praise God. And, 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 and to me, in those moments, you are to begin to realize, you know what? I see you. I know what you're trying to do. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You, you, you've got to be, a, amen, praise God, cognizant of the fact that the enemy does not want you to keep your mind on Jesus. Your amen. own flesh does not want you to keep your mind on Jesus. See, amen. your flesh wants you to keep your mind on your flesh. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Do I need to say that again? No. <laughs> Amen. Your flesh will give you selfish prayers, praise God. What do I mean by that? Your flesh, your, your prayers coming through the fleshly mind is going to be about me, myself, and I, my family, praise God. What I need, glory to God, hallelujah. But when one's mind is stayed upon Jesus, then all of a sudden, even your prayers begin to change, praise God. It is having that mind stayed on him, focused on him, that allows us, 
amen, praise God, to see the needs of our brothers and our sisters, praise God. If you ever want, amen, to understand, amen, what you should pray about, Amen. As it relates to, amen, the body of Christ in the church, keep your mind on him. He'll let you know, praise God. Amen. Praise God. Remember, he's the head of this body. He, he, he gives us that direction. He gives us that insight, praise God, amen, of what we should be doing. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, amen. I, I, I want to encourage us, amen, on, tonight, on today. If, if we don't get anything else, praise God, not only just seeking those things of, that are above, but I, I need us to think, amen, praise God, on those heavenly thoughts. Amen. Because the reality of it is, saints, when you look at everything that is going on in this way, in this world, praise God, hallelujah, it'll depress you. Amen. Praise God. It'll get you to the point. Amen. You don't even want to go outdoors. You don't even want to turn on the news. You don't want to read a newspaper. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. But as one uh, minister I know that preached many, many years ago, amen, he made he, his, his, his subject or his theme was there is good news in a bad news time. Amen. Praise God. And that good news is that Jesus saves. Praise God. That yeah, good news, yeah. amen, is that Jesus heals. Jesus delivers, praise God. Amen. So even in a time such as this, and, and even more so, amen, our thoughts are to be heavenly thoughts, praise God. Set your affection, set your minds on things above, not on things of the earth. He cautions you, amen, not to do that, not on these things of the earth, praise God. Amen but on those things, amen, praise God, that are above. So again, we are to set our minds on heavenly things and, and to view every, everything, to view everything, amen, from the perspective of eternity and to adopt a new set of values, amen, and to live, amen, praise God, by the standards of that new creation. Remember, we are, we, we, amen, are no longer the same. We have been brought, bought with a price, praise God. And, and, and so that old man, amen, has been crucified, praise God. That old man has been put to death. So even the way I look at things should be differently. I have to now look at them through the perspective, amen, of, amen, eternity, through the idea, amen, praise God, of how God sees this, praise God, amen. Glory to God. And when you think about it and, you know, there is and, and what happens, amen, when our mind is where it should be and needs to be, then we can see even as the prophet Elijah had, amen, and prayed that his servant would, he then saw, amen, that he did not have to fear. He then understood that they that be with us are more, praise God. Amen. Glory to God. And so even now, when we think about it, if our mind, amen, praise God, is heavenward, if, if, if we think, amen, praise God, those, amen, if we now operate and we work from a perspective, amen, praise God, of heavenly thoughts, then we can navigate a lot of what we're dealing with right here in this present earth, praise God. Amen. And, and so he, he, he gives us that, praise God. So the scripture tells us, amen, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed, amen, changed the renewing. by what? The renewing, renewing of, of your, your mind. mind, praise God. Hallelujah. Romans 12, amen, and two, praise God. Amen. Again, praise the Lord. And be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, praise God, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That, that, that renewing of that mind means, amen, the renovating of it, praise God. And renovation in this case means, amen, praise God, to bring it back to its original state, praise God, if you will. Man in his original state before the fall was in, hallelujah, in communion with God. Amen. He was in fellowship, praise God, with God. God would meet him in the cool of the day, praise God. Hallelujah. Can you imagine that? Hallelujah. My Amen. Lord. Meeting God on a daily basis in the cool Amen. of the day, praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of our Lord. St. John 
chapter, uh, 1 John rather, chapter 1, I mean chapter 2, verse 15 says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Praise God. And this next verse to me tells us, amen, why, amen, really we should not love the world. Verse 17 says, and the world passeth away and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth how long? Forever, praise God. He's telling you, amen, don't love something that won't last, praise God, but love that which is eternal, praise God. Love that which is going to abide forever, praise God. Amen. And the world, praise God, as we know it, passeth away, praise God. How many know it's going to pass away? Uh, Paul talks about, amen, those amen. things that are seen are what? Amen. Horror. They're temporary. Temporal, yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you imagine those things that we haven't seen yet? Glory to God. That are eternal. Hallelujah. Excuse me, y'all. Amen. Praise God. There are some things we have not seen. Glory to God. They're eternal. Hallelujah. But what we see, it's only temporary. Praise God. Pain, what we feel, what you're going through, Sister Shirley, is only temporary. Praise God. Amen. That mountain that's in front of you, it won't always be there. Praise God. Hallelujah. That hurt, that sorrow, amen, praise God, won't always be there. I make this statement, amen, I, uh, I, I think a, a couple of weeks ago, and I've been, amen, praise the Lord, you know, um, just sort of dealing with it in my mind. Look, every wrong that we experience will not necessarily be corrected in this life. Y'all hear me? There are, some, there are some things that, that wrongs that have been done to us, we may take to the grave, but you can rest assured in eternity, oh, glory to God, amen, praise God. You won't have to deal with it anymore, praise God, amen. There may be some hurts, some sorrows, some pains, amen, that you take to the grave, but when you rise again, glory to God, amen, praise the name of our Lord. Amen. You won't have to worry about those things anymore. Praise God. And that's the kind of thing that I'm trying to get us. To see. We've got to see the bigger picture. Praise God. A lot of times when see when we when our mind is on earthly things, we can't see the larger picture, the greater picture. Praise God. What awaits us? Eternity awaits us. Praise God. What does that mean? That means that those things that are not eternal won't be there, praise God. What do you mean, preacher? I want to take y'all on a little trip, praise the Lord. Let's go to the book of Revelations. Very familiar passage. Praise God. Chapter 21. Verse 1, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea and i john saw the holy city new jerusalem coming down from god out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband and i heard a great voice out of heaven saying behold the tabernacle that is the tent of god is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be, look at what it says, with them and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Look at what it says. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and God shall wipe away all tears from
from their eyes. Amen. Amen. I know there, there's a song and every time I hear it, it's just like, I just, you know, I just sort of like, you know, really, you know, and the song goes, you have cried your last tear. Praise God. Amen. Or you have shed your last tear. Praise God. Amen. As long as we're in this light, praise the Lord, you're going to do some crying. But there comes amen. a time, amen, when it says here, and God shall wipe away all tears from your eyes, and there shall be no more death. See, tears, amen, these type of tears that he's talking about, those don't transfer or translate over into eternity. Death does not transfer over into eternity. Neither sorrow nor and crying, neither shall there be any more pain. And pain is not just simply, amen, praise God, that which is physical, but also that which is emotion, that mental anguish, praise God. All of this, there, there are those things that we deal with, amen, praise God, and perhaps you have gotten a debt at at amen, praise God, concealing it as if, amen, nothing, it, it doesn't bother, amen, you as much as you tend, uh, as much as, as, you know, so that you don't necessarily let that on, how much, how deep these things are, God knows. And thank God, he, the grace that he gives us and the strength that he gives us, praise God. But there will come a day, there will come a time when truly, these things, amen, praise God, are no longer there, praise God. He goes on, for the former things are passed away. These become what? Death, pain, sorrow, crying, tears, become what? The former things, praise God. They're present now, but there comes a time when they'll be what? Just simply the former things. Hallelujah. Look at what look at what awaits us, saints. Look at what awaits you. Hallelujah. To be able one day to look at pain, to look at death, to look at sorrow as being something that was former. Amen. Amen. I, I, I won't have to deal with them anymore. Thank you. Praise Lord. God. Hallelujah. Amen. Sister, 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 sister Taylor. Amen. Yes. It hurts now. Praise God. But there, yes, come, there will come a day. There will come a time. This meeting this is meeting being recorded. Praise God. Where it won't hurt as it hurts now. Praise God. Praise God. And I thank God, even, you know, when we, when we think about, you know, in this sense, and we think about all that we go through and all that we endure now, and even the Lord taking us through saints. Amen. So in, in one sense, what are we saying? I, I say it this way. We, we, we're getting a little taste, amen, of what he's going to give us in eternity. Amen. He gives us that respite. He, amen. He, and in many, in many, in many cases, he even takes things, amen, praise God, away. But there will come a day and there will come a time, praise God, amen, praise God. Well, the things that we deal with now, and this is one reason why we can go through what we're going through, praise God, is because, and, and, and this is why he's telling you, look, amen, praise God, think on these things. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because it gives you a different perspective. Praise Amen. God. There are those people now that wonder, how in the world are you making it? Thank you, Lord. Praise God. How are you going? And, and, and there are those that know your family, your friends, your co-workers, whatever. They know what you're dealing with, many of them. Lord. But your Amen. perspective is different than what theirs is. Praise God. Amen. Lord. Not, it's not just simply that we know that we have the Lord on our side, but we also understand, glory to God, hallelujah, there's an end date. Amen. My Amen. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. My Come Lord. And you know what? 
Only God knows that end date, but it's coming. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so, you know, when we look at this and we look at it from, again, from the, you know, of, of having that right frame of mind, of having that right perspective of things. And Lord, help me to see things as you see them. Praise God. Help me to see, amen, through your eyes. Praise God. And that, that, that should be a prayer that we pray on a daily basis. Help me to see as you see. Praise God. I, I know my flesh. I know, amen, praise God, my thoughts are not like yours and, you know, and, 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 and your, my ways are not like yours, but amen, we strive, amen, praise God, amen, to draw closer to him. And as, as James says, that when we draw closer to him, he does what? He draws nigh to us, praise God. He comes near to us. And I, I, I often, I look at it, and, and I'm, I, you know, I look at it from, in my mind, from a visual perspective. It is one thing for me to take a step toward Jesus. But what happens when Jesus takes a step toward you? Praise God. You ever think amen. of it, amen, in those terms, praise God. Someone said, amen, once that when you take a step toward him, you get his attention, praise God. But when he takes a step toward yeah, you, glory to God, things begin to change. Things begin to drop off, praise God. Amen, glory. Minds change, hearts change, praise God. Situations and circumstances, they either change, praise God, or the Lord changes you. Amen. Just deal with what you're dealing with, praise God. Amen. Many times, and I, I don't know who I'm saying this for, praise God. Most likely, probably myself, praise God. A lot of things are not going to change. But what Thank will you. change is God will change us, praise God. Amen. To the point, glory to God, where we, hallelujah, he gets the glory. And, I, and that's the thing Thank that I need you. you to understand. God Amen. Wants his glory, praise God. He wants his honor, praise God. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And guess what? He's going to get it, praise the oh, name yes, of our Lord. Lord. Amen. Oh, glory to God. And he wants, amen. So when we, amen, praise God, he can make it so, amen, glory to God, that nothing changes around you but Thank you. Lord. Praise God. And in the midst of it, you go through. In the midst of it, you stand, praise God. In the midst of it, praise God, you give him the glory. You give him the honor. You don't withhold the praise, praise God. Because, amen, truth be told, your enemy wants to shut your mouth. Your enemy does not want you to give him the glory. Your enemy, amen, praise God, wants you to curse him. Amen, glory to God, hallelujah. Amen, praise God, but I will not. Amen. I shall not. I, I am not. Praise Come God. On. Hallelujah. Oh, Glory to you. God. Thank you, Lord. See, we have to get to that point. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And, you know, just as those Hebrews, praise the Lord, the issue, amen, praise God, wasn't, amen, praise God, whether or not they would be delivered. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. Praise God. Amen. In their mind, the, their, their mindset was we can't buy. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. We've established the fact that, amen, what you want us to do, we cannot do it. Praise God. Thank you, and they were all, I thank you, Holy Ghost. They were thank all you. in agreement. Praise God. It wasn't two to one, one to two. Praise God. Amen. But they were all on the same. Look at what happens when everybody is in agreement. Praise God. Uh -huh. Amen. They, they, they weren't saying, well, let, hold up. Let's, you know, one wasn't saying to the other, let's, let's give it a little bit more time. Amen. Praise God. But they spoke and they acted as one man. Praise God. Thank Hallelujah. You, Lord, and, I, and I believe even the children of God, we as children of God, amen. Praise God. Ought to act the same way. Praise God. Amen. We ought to say the same thing. We ought to walk by the same rule. Praise God. Amen. There shouldn't be so much head scratching. Why? Why is it the spirit of God is telling me not to and, and you're doing what the thing, you know, something's wrong with that picture, praise God. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. When will we all get on the same page, praise God? And, and so when we look at it, amen, amen, praise the Lord. Amen. It's not about what God, amen, hallelujah, 
praise God, will do or won't do. They understood and they knew that God is a deliverer. Thank you, Lord. But it was, that wasn't their concern. That wasn't their issue. The, their, their, their concern was, amen, giving God glory, Thank giving you. God the honor, praise God. Oh, what was the honor? What was the glory? And not worshiping another God and not putting something else, amen, form of worship in front of him. When Thank that you. is done, you're giving him glory. You're oh. giving him glory honor. You're giving him what he is looking for. Praise God. Thank amen. You, Hallelujah. Amen. He's not looking. Amen. How long will we just simply give him, Lord, I'm sorry. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I, I, I did it again. Praise God. I knew I shouldn't have, but I did it again. How long is that going to be our testimony? How long is that going to be our excuse? Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. He's looking for those. Hallelujah. Thank Amen. You, Praise God that are going to worship him Thank in you, spirit Jesus. and in truth. Praise God. You, Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank Amen. You, and when, 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 how does that happen? Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. We, we know, amen, in spirit. We know that, that having the Holy Ghost on the inside. But what about that truth? Praise God. What about that revealed understanding and knowledge, which we are calling truth, praise God, that comes to the obedient. He Thank reveals, you. he opens up those truths to those that will walk up right with him, praise God. Amen. Glory to God. And so when you've got that, amen, praise God, package, if you will, amen, glory to God, you can give him what he wants, praise God. You can, amen, he can get the glory out of you. I want you to understand this. Hallelujah, my Lord, my God. Hallelujah. Think about what the Lord is saying in his conversation with Satan about Job. Have thou considered. Oh, thank you, Lord. Think about that. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Who brings Job up? God does. Thank you, Jesus. Satan, what are you doing? Walking to and fro. Up and down in the earth, praise God. Oh, Amen. We find out later in the in the New Testament, seeking whom he may devour. Lord Jesus. Praise the name of our God. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. And God introduces Job. Have thou considered? Thank you, Lord. I want you, I want you to think about that a minute. What does it take for the Lord? Amen. To say what he said. Thank you, Lord Jesus. There has to be, amen, praise God, an understanding from God's perspective. Thank you. That he Lord. won't fail me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Y'all hear me. Oh, thank you, Lord. Y'all hear me. Thank you, Jesus. This is why. Peter and, and John Thank and those you. rejoiced because they were counted worthy. That's how they saw it. They saw it from the perspective Thank you, Lord. that God knew that they would not fail him. Thank you, my God. Excuse me a minute. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I hope you see what I'm trying to get across to you, praise God. God does not set Job up to fail. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God knows the heart, the mind the temperament of Job. Praise God. Look at what he says. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to soon let you go. Praise God. Just drop something in my mind and I, I just want to share this with you. Praise God. 
Job chapter 1. I want you to see something. Something simple, but very important. Everybody there? Amen. Uh, Job chapter one. I want you to notice <coughs> I, 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 I'll start at verse six and it says, now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, whence comest thou? And then Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in, in the earth and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, look at what, look, this is what I want you to see. Hast thou considered? Hallelujah. Look at what he, look at how the Lord addresses Job. He says, My servant Job. My Lord. He didn't say, Hast thou considered Job? <laughs> but he called him what? A servant. His servant. What does a servant do? Serve. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> he serves. Praise God. Say that again. He, he, he does what? He serves. He, serves. <laughs> he stands. Oh, Amen. Dear. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. And he does. He, 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 he moves. He does at the direction Amen. Praise God of his master. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. My servant. And like I said, he, he, he does not set Job up. He understood, he knew that <laughs> this brother, this servant would not disappoint. This is not to say and we find this out later in the, in the book that Job does not have issues or shortcomings. But in this, he would not fail. Praise God. Yeah. I want you to, I, I, I just need us to understand this. Praise God. It is not that I am trying to put pressure on us. Praise God. Or undo pressure. That's not what I'm, that's not what I'm attempting to do. Because here's, here's to me, look, God molds us. God makes us into what he wants us to be. But we have to be that willing vessel. We, we've got to yield to him. Praise Amen. God. It is only in that yielding, that presenting oneself, that surrendering oneself, that we get to this place. Praise God. Amen. We don't amen. get ourselves there. We're not, amen. I think sometimes we look at, amen, particularly a lot of the patriots that we read about or even those that we read in scriptures as being some sort of super or extraordinary beings. These are folk, praise God, that have yielded themselves to the will of God. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. And we all have that privilege, that opportunity Amen. To do the self same thing. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank this you. is what we're talking about here. Praise God. Amen. To that point where God, amen, will get the glory amen. and the honor. See, Satan is what? He is the accuser of the brethren. Mm -hmm. He's saying, no, we can't. He's saying, praise God, amen, amen, glory to God. They, they, they don't love you like that, praise God. Uh, the only reason he's doing it is because of what you're 
what you're blessed them yeah. with, praise God. Mm. Do, do you not know when, when you think about it and you look at his assessment, it's all, if you will, natural, it's physical. You know mm -hmm. why? Because Satan doesn't know your heart. Hey, come on. Hey. Jesus. Hallelujah. Only God alone knows the heart. Oh, my Lord. Thank you. Oh, Jesus. God bless you. Amen. I see my time is up. Thank I hope you, we Lord. got something out of this today. Praise God. Thank Amen. you, Lord. I'm going to turn Amen. it at this time. Amen. Over to. Oh, thank uh, you, Jesus. Elder James is on. So you're good. Thank you, Jesus. Elder bless me. Who do I turn it over? Elder James. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes. God bless you, son. So we'll we'll pick up where we left off on Tuesday evening. Amen. In Jesus. Name. Come on, let's 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 think on these heavenly thoughts, praise God. Amen. Let the Lord take hold of our minds. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Go and take my mind. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Take my Ishata da Bayete Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. If you want to lose your mind, lose your mind in Him. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise God. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Thank you.